A Ghost Story Introduction Before anything, a disclaimer first. I don't go out and consciously search for ghosts, nor do I believe that I will ever see ghosts even if I do so. I am not also saying that ghosts are real or are not real, because I am more into seeing is to believing. And I gotta see a lot of something to a point it becomes part of a normal experience before I start believing in that something. Also, I am not that superstitious. So, sharing this experience of mine is not me saying I believe in ghosts or that ghosts are real. But I do recognize the fact that we experience weird stuff in our lives. And this story is one of them weird things in my life. An experience that many people call a ghost story. Part 1. The Apartment First, I have to describe the apartment I lived at years ago where this scary experience happened. Basically, it looked something like this. I lived on the second floor of this apartment. This is my room here. The floor is always clean and shiny. And the room arrangement looked like this. And then there's this one long hallway, which leads to my room, the second to the last on the right side of the building. During the day, when everyone is out, the room and hallway looks scarily empty. Even though it looks clean, the silence and the feeling of tight space gets into me. And at night, Especially when neighbors forget to turn the hallway lights on, everything becomes simply eerie. If ever you have seen a horror film where a character passes through a quiet long hallway and expecting something scary to pop up, that's the same feeling I get in our apartment building. Finally, around this end part of the hallway, among these six rooms, I was the only tenant at that time. So here's the story of the time I saw something scary. Part 2 The Sighting It was a bright sunny afternoon. Just got back from work. It was a tiring day, I admit. I remember just wanting to get in my room and sleep for a bit. So, upon arriving at my apartment, I sorta of rushed inside, pushing the two glass doors with force. I felt weird when I entered through the first floor. It was a hot season that time, but inside the building, it felt cold. I thought maybe someone forgot to close their door and let the cold air-conditioned air out, because it was really that cold as I was walking on the hallway going for the stairs. My eyes were looking at the floor as I climbed the stairs, going to the second floor. I thought, Nice, they cleaned the floor. It's so shiny. Before I can reach my room, there's a sharp turn towards my left I have to cross. As I was crossing this left turn, once again, I felt the cold air. I am very curious now, this time because I have not seen any of the doors open on the first floor. I stop and look on my right to see whether one of the doors from the right side of the building was open. I dismissed this weird cold air again, thinking it's not that important. I just really want to go to my room and rest. I turned my eyes back on the floor. It was really that clean, I can't help but look at my reflection. I was nearing towards the door of my room the room second to the last, down the hallway. I slowly panned my sight up towards the end of the hallway. The end of the hallway is glass all throughout. From outside, I can see the green leaves and the glitter of the golden brown afternoon sunlight. The shadow and light glitter made the end of the hallway look, look nice if I were being honest. This visual lulled my senses to relax and made me ignore everything. So I was now intently looking straight at the dancing plants outside that was causing lights and shadow to play at the end of the hallway, 
It was hypnotic. Taking the last few steps towards my door, I thought to myself, finally, I'm home. But before I could turn right and reach for the doorknob, I saw something that really rattled my senses awake. A dark shadow figure moved towards the door on the left. To be specific, this shadow figure looked like a faint, see-through silhouette of a man, taller than me. Why do I say a man? Because the shape of the head to the shoulder of this shadow figure was very obvious. I saw a shadow figure face through the door of the last room on the left side of the hallway. This shook me. It was disturbing beyond my belief. What did I just see? I froze in front of my room's door. I couldn't move. It was like something straight out of a horror movie. I was scared. I was just very, very shook. Disturbed. Borderline going crazy. Cold sweat was on my face. I felt the very, very cold air in that hallway. My lips became dry and I can hear myself breathing. What did I just see? Part 3 Hunting in my room Before the shadow figure apparition incident happened, I already experienced a lot of weird things in that second floor, in that hallway, and a lot of eerie things inside my room. I gave no mind because my thinking is everything can be explained logically. So, I paid no attention to this somewhat paranormal things happening. For one, at night, every time I go home from my workout and the hallway lights are not turned on, there's always this lingering feeling that someone or something stands in the corner. There's always this feeling as if someone is peeking through the corners, looking at me. Another weird experience beside the cold sensation I get inside that building is that there were times when I feel like a soft blow of wind passes through my head or my neck. The second floor does not have big open windows by the way, so it's highly unlikely for air to blow hard enough for my head and neck to feel it. And lastly, the experiences I had inside my room. One is when I was sitting on the toilet and the shower curtain moved a good couple of inches. Another is the faucet in my shower room is turned on and I am the type of a person that always double checks lights, faucets, gas, and door locks. I don't know how that faucet was turned on. Lastly, I have more experiences of sleep paralysis in that room compared to my new apartment now. All of these things I ignored and moved on with my life. And now that I saw that shadow apparition, thinking about my past experiences inside my room made things even more scarier. Part 4 Am I going crazy? I never told what I saw to my neighbors. I know some of them are religious people and very scientific in their thinking. I thought if I told them about my shadow apparition sighting, I might just be called a crazy man. I had to suffer a couple of days. I had to be scared for a couple of weeks before I started feeling comfortable again being inside that building. It took me time before I felt comfortable inside my room. Every time I go home, I have to look closer and see whether there's another shadow apparition. I also started talking to it, or rather to myself and telling this apparition to not do anything weird to me. Most notable, I started recording my sleep at nights using my GoPro. The only weird thing it caught was me waking up and going back to bed and the cat running around the room. Speaking of my room, every time I am in my room, I also have to change my behavior. Before, I would have comfortable sleep with lights off. Now, after that incident, I don't, because of those weird experiences in my room. They now make sense. That it seems my past weird experiences inside my room are somehow connected to that shadow apparition. Like, I would wake up suddenly and realizing, out of nowhere, I don't want to be in the darkness anymore. 
I am not scared of the darkness in my room, but there are many nights when I felt very uncomfortable. Like someone standing in the middle of my room, just looking at me. And of course, the sleep paralysis experiences. I know I have experienced a lot of sleep paralysis in that room, compared to my current room right now in this new apartment. But yeah, I was even scared inside that old room. But scared, in a sense, it was more mental scared, because I can't seem to relax my head. I have become jittery every time I see flickers of light and shadow. I develop a quick startle reaction for even the smallest motion in my room. I became easily nervous about almost everything inside that building. Honestly, I thought I was going nuts. One day, I overheard my neighbors talk. They were talking about normal things. I stopped to listen and joined in the chat. Then, one of them started sharing her ghostly experience at 3 a.m. That, she always hears footsteps and knocking on the doors. But when she goes out to check, she finds none. This caught my attention. Hearing this story comforted me. Because there's someone who can validate my experience. To validate that I was not going crazy. I shared my story with them. How I saw this shadow apparition face through the door inside the room at the end of the hallway. The four neighbors were actually not surprised. And this is because they too had their own weird experience inside our building apartment. Besides the first neighbor, the other three neighbors also were witnesses to some scary things. And they experienced almost the same things as we did. Cold air chills. The feeling that someone is standing at the corner of the hall, staring. Weird feeling inside the rooms. And footsteps in the hallway. This was scary to hear from me, but at the same time, hearing their experiences calmed my nerves. Thank goodness I am not going crazy, I thought. I have since moved out from that apartment. And in my new apartment, I have never ever experienced anything weird or scary. Sleep paralysis also has become very rare. Conclusion A Revelation I have not told you yet the real revelation in this story. A twist, if you may. A revelation which can actually help explain my scary encounter. There's one key piece of information I have not disclosed. Here it is. Remember this room? I actually know the story of the former tenant from that room. I heard the former tenant of that room was removed from work. So he moved out and lived downtown. He spent his time going out, drinking, meeting people, and enjoying life, as far as I heard. Then, one day, a noose about that guy was shared to me. The guy was found in his downtown apartment, dead. The police discovered that the guy had hanged himself. Thanks for listening.